On the news at 10, President Buhari hosts founding fathers of the All Progressives Congress as party adopts consensus mode of electing officers in preparations for Saturday's national convention. Uh, House of Reps members also are summoning ministers of state for petroleum finance over state of refineries as NNPC insists the country has sufficient petroleum for more than a month. Outside Nigeria, President Biden announces new sanctions against Russians, declares support for removing Moscow from G20. In sports tonight, Eagles land in Ghana ahead clash with the Black Stars. And thank you for joining us on TVC News at 10. In less than 48 hours, the All Progressives Congress National Convention will hold and preparations are in top gear to ensure a smooth exercise. President Mohamed Buhari has hosted the founding fathers of the All Progressives Congress at the Presidential Villa in Abuja. And this is to show his appreciation to the critical stakeholders for their continued support, understanding and cooperation to his administration, as well as keeping faith with the goals and ideals of the party. The engagement was also in furtherance of efforts by President Buhari at ensuring a rank of free and successful national convention of the party coming up on Saturday. In attendance were the first interim chairman of the party, Chief B.C. Akonde, national leader of the APC, Ashuaji Bola Tinubu, Dr. Ogunaya Onu, among others. Also in attendance are governors uh, Nasir El Rafai, Amino Masari, May Malabuni, and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Bas. Mustafa. And correspondent Femi Akode joins us live from Abuja. We've seen consultations at the Asarok in an unprecedented dimension in the past 24 hours. The president met with APC governors and then the chairmanship aspirants. What more are you learning about this new meeting he had with the founding members of the APC? Well, if I mean, this is an indication that the stakes are indeed getting higher. We have seen um, the president make moves to try to keep the party together. He has, uh, over the, f the past few days, uh, tried to play the, ro the role of um, that um, glue that would hold the party together to provide leadership for the party because uh, the, the vi we have seen divisions within the party. Several issues have caused uh, different um, kinds of um, rancor within the party and moving into the national convention, what the leadership of the party is trying to do is to ensure that the party goes into that convention uh, united we have seen the president hold a meeting with uh, aspirants for the office of the national chairman. He has met with APC governors and met with other critical stakeholders. The meeting with the founding uh, fathers of the All Progressives Congress was uh, held behind closed doors. We do not know all of what was discussed in that meeting but from what was reported we understand that the president thanked them for for, for supporting his administration for their understanding but if I mean, we know that there are other underlying issues especially leading into the convention the party has agreed to adopt consensus as a mode of um, choosing their candidate but some people are also not satisfied with uh, this adoption of, of, of consensus some people again are not also happy with uh, the president having preference for, for setting our candidates at so many issues now come into play but you know what the president is trying to do is to meet with different interest groups to ensure that everyone is on the same page ahead of the national convention one thing we know now is that this convention will hold for certainty on saturday the 26th of, of march Nifemi. Femeko, the live for us in Abuja. Keep us posted with more updates from that particular meeting. And in preparation for the March 26th event, the APC has agreed to adopt consensus vote for election of its officials. Chairman of the Publicity Subcommittee for the National Convention, Governor Abdullahi Suleiman, stated that President Buhari and APC governors adopted consensus to ensure a rank of free convention. Correspondent Habida Alawa reports. It's two days to National Convention of the Ruling All Progressives Congress. Governors elected on the party's platform on Wednesday agreed to support whoever emerges as the choice of President Muhammadu Buhari. This is part of the outcome of the governor's meeting with the president at the presidential villa. 
The media subcommittee headed by Nasara State Governor Abdullahi Suleiman says the major caucus of the party have been meeting in order to discuss most of the grey areas and resolve them and so far all the governors had been inspired. We have been able to resolve most of the issues going towards this convention in a consensus arrangement. Just last night, Mr. President has met with all the chairmen, uh, the chairmanship aspirants, you know, of the national chairmanship of our party. And from what you can see so far, so good, uh, things are going without any rancor and without any major uh, uh, problems going around. Another subcommittee, Convention Legacy Rapporteur, is reviewing the performance of APC Control State ahead of the convention. They will be harmonizing an implementation agenda framework as a follow-up to existing policies. Different caucuses are still meeting following the option of consensus, which still needs to be properly harmonized to give all members same opportunity. President Mamadou Buhari is said to have agreed on a consensus in a move to ensure a rank of free convention. Habida Lawal, TVC News, Abuja. Well, let's now talk to the National Woman Leader of the All Progressives Congress, Stella Kotete, who joins us live from our Abuja studio. We've seen the President meet with uh, quite a number of APC stakeholders in the past 24 hours. Talk to us about um, what the, all these consultations are about. Um, the president, as the leader of the party, um, has really gone ahead to meet with stakeholders, um, the governors, senators, and other critical um, leaders of the party, to come up with, uh, you know, more unity and a united list for uh, our convention, which is holding on the 26th. And so these are part of the pre-convention arrangements or activities that are usually expected um, as a ruling party. And so it's nothing strange. Um, you can see that the critical stakeholders have all attended these meetings and um, they've all accepted to work together to see that we have a peaceful con convention and um, we get ourselves prepared for 2023. We hear that the president is preaching consensus and that it is not quite new to the party. It's how the previous national chairman also evolved. But how exactly are the um, APC chairmanship aspirants receiving this news? Um, it's part of our constitution. You can actually get a consensus list or, you know, um, you go into the ballots. And so everyone is prepared and I'm sure um, by tomorrow, you should get more response. But I'm sure everybody has accepted what is what was what have been you know offered, and um, definitely would have a peaceful convention. That's the most important thing: having a chairman and having all elected NWC members of our party um, on the 26th. That would you know take the party ahead to the 2023 elections. You and talked. Beyond. You talked about a unity list. What's this list about? And. Is this consensus arrangement for every other position or just that of the chairman? 26th of um, March is just about 48 or 24 hours from now. I'm sure you get to know about that on the 26th on the field. So the president. It's a party arrangement that would see that we have all elected officers elected on the 26th. So if Either there's a unity list, through the ballots. if there's a unity list, like you mentioned earlier, does that mean that um, the 26th of March you're talking about would not feature an, an elective exercise, so to speak? I'm sure you heard me. I said it it's, we'll definitely have consensus as well as have people go on the ballots. All right. So the president earlier today, um, we're just reporting that he met with founding members of the All Progressives Congress. Uh, perhaps you can walk us through what that meeting was precisely about. I was not in attendance, but what I know is that the party is ready to host um, the national convention on the 26th. And um, if you have gone through the Eagle Square, you see that everything is on top gear. Um, critical stakeholders as well as delegates after they arrive in Abuja. Um, the party is stronger than ever before. 
um, the Ketiko Committee is united to see that we have a peaceful convention. Um, our critical stakeholders, from governors to the senators, today we even hosted the senators at the Ketiko um, level. Um, and, you know, everyone is ready, everyone is prepared to see that as the ruling party will maintain our cool and have, you know, everyone on board to elect every delegate, statute three and elected delegate on board to elect our national working committee uh, members. Mm. The last time we spoke, it was during, it was during the party's that. women conference, and you spoke passionately about getting more women involved and getting them elected during this process. How many of such um, individuals do you expect to feature on the unity list? The progressives have once again done, have set the bar and have also raised the bar and raised new standards. And so on the 26th, you'll be having women run for zonal chairman positions. Uh, you have women also um, running for other the critical positions of the party. And I'm aware that um, on one or two um, offices, some of the women have actually been, I'm sure they'll be returning op on opposed because the women of the party also are coming together to see that um, they will support their own. And so on the 20, after 26, I'm sure Nigerians will be proud to see that the APC is really gender friendly. Uh, we'll be having more women at our NEC meetings. We'll be having more women at our NWC meeting. And for me, that's what the progressive is all about. That's what we stand for, uh, peace setters, and ensuring that everyone you know, has a voice and is allowed to sit on the table. And so um, I'm sure and I'm very positive that the result will speak for itself on the 27th. Episode National Woman Leader Stella Okotete, thank you for talking to us tonight. Thank you very much for having me. Let's turn our attention now to the National Assembly where the House of Representatives and other committee investigating the state of Nigeria's refineries has given the Minister of State for Petroleum, Minister of Finance and others uh, relevant to its assignment one week to appear before it. The lawmakers declined audience with the representatives of the heads of MDAs. National Assembly correspondent Jockey Adisa reports. In the wake of the lingering fuel scarcity, the House set up this committee to investigate the status of refineries in the country. This meeting expected that the Minister of State Petroleum Resources and NPC CEO, as well as the DG Budget Office of the Federation, will be present in person. The lawmakers are taken aback by the copious absence of those invited. They declined audience with those sent to stand in for them, all of whom could not provide a supporting letter to back their representation. Those people that I've mentioned, they are hereby directed to appear in person in our next meeting a week from today. At his brief session in plenary on Thursday, the House resolved to investigate the circumstances surrounding the killing of one Miss Chinyere Okwa, allegedly shot by DSS operatives in Enugu State. Deputy Minority Leader Tobi Okechuku later spoke to TVC News on the intent of the petition. They said some operatives uh, in black, uh, incidentally they are saying that the DSS, you know, came and uh, started the shooting. When uh, there was a little bit of calm and uh, they, they, they now discovered that Chinenye had fallen and had some gunshot wounds. He also condemned the rejection of the yeah. gunshot victim mm -hmm. by some hospitals. The young lady was taken to three hos four hospitals. She was refused treatment. Even the last one that refused her to be uh, treated, when they brought her cops, they now accepted the cops to be put in a morgue. Controversy continues to surround last Friday's cut judgment directing the Attorney General of the Federation to delete Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act. The spokesman of the House insists the National Assembly was only trying to cure some mischief with that provision of the law in the Act. It is better to interview the plaintiff to find out from him what was his reason for not joining the stakeholders who are supposed to you know, answer to this call. But the National Assembly says the Electoral Act 2022, as signed by President Muhammad Buhari, is still very much alive until its right of appeal is fully exhausted on the controversial portion. Chokeyadza, TVC News, Abuja.
Meanwhile, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation is insisting it has more than 1.6 billion litres of premium motor spirit, which is sufficient for about a month. Chief Executive Officer of the NNPC made this known at the extraordinary general meeting held by the Association of Distributors and Transporters of Petroleum Products in Abuja. Celestina Area reports. For the past two months, Q have failed to thin out in many petrol stations across the country. The scenario started when adulterated PMS was imported into the country, leaving many motorists stranded and some who purchased the bad fuel having problems with their car engines. The last resort for some end users of PMS is now buying from black market vendors. These vendors have seized the opportunity to sell the product at exorbitant prices. In the midst of these difficulties, the NNPC is still insisting that there is over 1.6 billion litres of PMS, which should last over 27 days. Representative of the Chief Executive Officer of the NNPC, Yemi Adetunji, made this known in Abuja at the Extraordinary General Meeting of the Association of Distributors and Transporters of Petroleum Products, IDTOP. NNPC, as of today, has 1.6 billion litres of PMS, which is about 27 days sufficiency. Uh, this is to assure Nigerians again, you know, that there is adequate supply of uh, petroleum uh, PMS, and it will get, you know, and it's getting to all nooks and crannies of Nigeria. While Aditop says it has concluded arrangement to set the pace in the distribution of petroleum products through the use of new ideas to bring genuine change. It mammalizes the challenges associated in loading a truck of PMS. We have concluded arrangement to set the pace in the distribution of petroleum products through the use of new ideas to bring genuine change for the betterment of both truck owners uh, by the extension to the drivers. That for you to load a truck now, you will spend up to 90,000 naira. What is the profit? Maybe two or three hundred thousand. How do we continue to do like this? At the end of the meeting, Adi Top and Ipman pledged not to embark on any form of industrial action that will lead to the shutting down of any NNPC depot. Adi has agreed to work with relevant stakeholders in the oil and gas industry, ranging from the NNPC, Ipman, PPMC, and any issue that would trigger work stoppage. Adi would consult with relevant stakeholders before taking any action. Celestina Iria, TVC News, Abuja. In a bid to bolster confidence and forestall any discontent among its rank and file, the Inspector General of Police has ordered the distribution of equipment and accountants to police formations across the country. The items include protective gear for the lower rank of produce. Sifonisian reports. The management of the Nigeria police has been on a confidence-building drive among its rank and file days after it dismissed as fake news reports of an impending strike by its operatives. Part of the measure is to ensure the distribution of working tools and accoutrement that will improve the operational well-being of its rank and file. We are granted access to the warehouses where the items are kept. Because we have them in the, in the warehouse, so there is no need for us uh, keeping them. We have procured these for some times now, but the templates to share them across the country has not been presented to ERGP for his approval, and which of course he has approved immediately. He says for items like police uniforms, each operative is meant to get at least two pairs. And what we have made uh, arrangement for is for at least uh, a personnel to have two pairs of all these camo dress, a uh, black cashmere, the new blue, the black, black trousers, cardigan, uh, raincoats. What is yet to be seen is how quickly the items would get to those it is meant for. This is a drive by the police leadership to bolster confidence among its rank and file. Sifon ACN TVC News, Abuja. The Lagos State University has conferred PhDs on 76 graduates at the university's 25th convocation ceremony on Thursday. Governor of Kano State Abdullah Gandhije was also conferred with honorary doctorate degree. Senior correspondent Adi Doja Salam Adini reports. It's a celebration of success at the grand finale of the Lasso 25th Convocation Ceremony. Inside the auditorium, the academic procession began the ceremony 
witnessed by the Emir of Kano, Aminu Adubayiro, and Lagos traditional and religious leaders, as well as top government officials. The 76 graduates are from the 2019-2020 academic session who have completed their PhDs in the Faculty of Arts, Law, Education, Social Sciences and others. For those of you who have not attained the new vocational skills and training after your qualification, I want to urge you to register free online for each or any of our vocational entrepreneurial skills. You also have access to the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. We have facilitated the deployment of internet across the campuses and plans are underway to improve more of our facilities. We have signed MOUs with Delta State University on ICT solutions. Governor of Kano State is conferred with the degree of Doctor of Letters, Educational Development, Healthcare Development, and Community Development in recognition of his contributions to the advancement of humanity. We make it a practice to give education the highest sectoral allocation in our annual budgets, particularly that we have been implementing free and compulsory basic and secondary education in Kano State. The Convocation Lecturer, National Leader of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, represented by the Deputy Governor, Obafemi Hamzat, spoke on the theme, Global Trends, the rightful place of Nigeria in the world. It focused on how to improve the country. To acknowledge this lapse, bold enough to correct it, and tolerant enough to endlessly vilify each other for causing it. Let us all join hands. We must reform this country. We have no choice. The APC presidential aspirant, Bola Tinubu, also donated the sum of one billion naira for the construction of Bola Ahmed Tinubu Center for Leadership and Development at the university. Other deserving individuals who have served the country meritoriously also backed honorary doctorate degrees and emeritus professor. Adidoja Salama Dini, TVC News, Lagos. According to research, about 80% of Nigerians live in informal houses, uh, which is plagued by problems related to poor quality and inadequate infrastructure. Arcview Investment Company promises to bridge this gap with more housing units at its newest estate, Treasure Island Estate, in the area of Lagos. We have details in this report. Housing is regarded as the second most essential need of human beings after food. Its impact on the health and welfare of people is profound, hence the need for provision of more housing units in Nigeria. Thus, Agview Investment Company, reputed to have several estates in Nigeria and across the globe, introduced Treasure Island Estate located in the Kwe area of Lagos. Every day we are building. If you get to Ilasa Maja, we are currently building apartments. If you get to Mowe or further today, we are building, we have four estates there in the Mowe axis. We are building Bluestone Treasure Garden, um, Treasure Island Estate Phase 1, Phase 2, and the extension. If you get to Akodo, Ibejuleki, we are currently building houses. And also Alagbado, Treasure Island Estate Alagbado. It was launched last year. Just between last year and today, we have built over 200 units. Most of the houses available are for the elites and the high income earners. So, as a company, we are our, our, our vision is to provide affordable homes for Nigerians, most of all from the mid low income earners and the middle income earners. It was stated during the event that with an outright payment of four million naira, anyone can own a plot of land in one of the fastest growing areas in Lagos. As a company, they have the after sales and um, follow up in terms of um, customer service. You know, you've got land, someone needs to buy after buying the land. What happened afterwards, you know, in terms of development, if, they want to, if you want to develop, they can also support you. If you want to, you know, invest in additional property after the initial sales, they can also, you know, hold your hands and lead you to the right direction. It is a major 
major real estate investment location for people who know. You know, it's not completely far from Ibejuleki where you have so many developments going on. You know, the refinery, the deep sea port, uh, a proposed international airport and all of that. So if you're looking for a place for country home, you want to build a country home, stay away from the hustle and bustle of Lagos, a quiet place, peaceful place. For Nigerians in diaspora, I is also a good um, location and that's why we have Treasure Island Estate at now. Attack View Investment Company, strategic leadership, innovation and effective service delivery are essential to ensure that there are more housing units for all strata of the society.